Brian Crow here, executive chef here at Chestnut. So we did a foraging video uh, a couple weeks ago and just kind of wanted to showcase a couple of different preservative methods on ramps. Uh, you know, ramps are definitely one of my favorite ingredients this time of year for sure. You know, obviously we kind of talked about the short window. This is probably the last shipment of ramps that I'm going to receive. So it's a little sad, but it's also preserving them. Like I said, you kind of extend their shelf life into other great things. So I'm excited to showcase that. We're gonna show you a couple different techniques here, and I think it's gonna be uh, applications that can be used in different uh, vegetables and ingredients as well. Um, being that, you know, ramps are kinda hard, you can't really get them at the grocery store per se. Uh, so they're definitely a gem for a lot of chefs. So uh, the first and most simple way is basically just to take your ramps after you forage them and lay them on a sheet tray and literally freeze them. They actually come back to life pretty well. So what we'll do is we'll lay them on a sheet pan and then you know, after that, once they kind of get freezing, we'll just kind of put them in plastic bags. Um, as you can see, this was 421 when we got these. And uh, yeah, they come back really nicely and you, know, you kind of get that ramp, you know, the whole ramp exactly as well. So that's nice. I'm gonna put that to the side. Uh, also in the video, we, we talked about doing kind of like a ramp uh, powder. So, so we actually took these ramps and we threw them in the dehydrator overnight. They're nice and crispy. Now you could do this in the oven at like 100 to 150 overnight and then you kind of get the same kind of concept. The dehydrator is going to be a little more precise with certain vegetables. Yeah, as you can see, they're definitely kind of like kind of falling apart, which is good. It's what you want. Um, so here we're essentially just kind of throw them into this Vitamix and we'll get kind of like a ramp powder. And like I said, you can kind of use that powder on any type of protein um, or, or seasoning mix, really kind of, you know, push, push that ramp flavor. Right, so a spice grinder would work here as well too. All right, so pretty simple, you know, like I said, dehydrate them and then essentially you're just gonna pulverize them to, into a powder. You can take a chinois after the fact to really kind of get really nice finely dusted ramp powder, but uh, you know, the more you run it, the better of a powder it will be. Right, you can kind of see it's getting there. I think you need to go just a touch longer. But it smells, it smells really great. All right, so here we go. We got a nice ramp powder. Um, as you can kind of see, it's, uh, you know, you can run it through a chinois if you like, but it's really nice um, and really strong and potent. So um, you can use it as a seasoning if you wanted to. You could throw this, uh, you know, and some pasta. Um, I think it's really nice just to kind of get use it as a seasoning, like on a scallop or some lighter protein. So there you go. That's another preservative method. Next up, we're going to make a simple uh, ramp puree. So I got some veg stock, and basically we're just going to take the ramp leaves. And it's essentially just going to be a little salt and pepper, the ramp leaves, and the veg stock, and that's it. So we're gonna save these bulbs for pickling, which is great. And you know, the ramp puree is very versatile. All right, so we got our ramps inside of this Vitamix. Um, we're gonna add just a little bit of salt and pepper, just kinda accentuate the flavors. And then like I said, we got a vegetable stock. You know, water would work just as well too. So simple, just kind of a ramp puree. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this on and kind of add, go ahead and start off by adding some of this veg stock and then kind of slowly continue to add more veg stock until it gets to more of a, a paste. All right, you can kind of see 
the viscosity that you kind of want. Um, it still needs to be pureed a little bit longer, but I'm going to add a few more leaves to it just to kind of thicken it up a little bit more. Tends to be the thicker the better with these purees. You really kind of get the best uh, consistency. Add just a little more salt and pepper. I'm going to finish this off for about two, three more minutes. Okay, let's see where we're at consistency wise. Yeah, pretty good, you know. Definitely can tell that it's, you can smell the ramp flavor, you know, and it's, you know, a little, little looser than pesto, but, you know, for this application, it's gonna work out really well. So I pour a little bit in this bowl so you can kind of see the consistency. Kind of like a ramp smoothie, if you will. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's uh, just basic, simple ramp puree. So essentially, that's gonna um, be the base for a lot of a lot of great things. Okay, so for the last application of preserving ramps, I'm gonna showcase uh, some pickled ramps. It's probably one of my favorite applications. Um, you know, it's one of those that really takes on the flavor of the pickling spices. We actually have some pickling brine that we utilized from our last batch of pickled ramps. Uh, we basically just kind of strain that off and reuse it. I think that's something that you can definitely do. Uh, but our ratio here is kind of equal parts vinegar, sugar, and water. So we like to use uh, cider vinegar. And that's a good basic uh, uh, pickling liquid as well. And then it's nice to have some of these uh, pickling spices. You know, it's not imperative, but it, it, it pushes the flavor. So we got some mustard seeds, celery seeds, some cardamom pods, some bay leaves, some black peppercorns, and fennel seeds, and a little red pepper flakes. So, you know, a lot of different flavors going on there, but it's, we feel like it's really nice. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and add this to our pot. Go ahead and add our pickling liquid. Depending on how many you're doing, you may need to add a little more sugar, uh, vinegar, and salt. I'm sorry, water. All right. Let me go ahead and put this on the stove. See, you got some really nice aromatics going on. All right, so as we kind of wait for that to come to a boil, you want to go ahead and chop your ramps. Um, just kind of nice little consistent pieces. You know, the stalk of the ramp works well to pickle as well. The cool thing about pickling ramps is, you know, you don't have to put them in the freezer. You know, they definitely, as long as you can them appropriately, preserve them appropriately, you can just have these out for snack. We like to throw them on pastas, but man, you could you can really put this on anything. You know, it's very, very versatile. All right, so basically you just want to continue to kind of work your way through that, you know, and then you want to put this into a heat proof bowl. And then from there, you're going to add your pickling liquid over over these ramps. Um, and that's going to in turn pickle them. They're really going to be fully pickled uh, by the next day or, or so. You know, they actually get better as they kind of sit in that pickling brine. So the longer you can wait to kind of open them up, um, the better off you'll be. You got these ramps. So let me show you the fin finished product here. So you got these great pickled ramps. As you can kind of see, they kind of take on the, the pink color of the brine from the cider vinegar. They're really tasty. They got a nice, nice sharp bite from the acidity. You can really still taste the ramp flavor. The bulb itself is probably the strongest of the flavor in my opinion. I think it's a you know really cool, really cool way to 
showcase one ingredient done several different ways. Ingredient that's only one month of the year. It's important that uh, they're sustainably harvested as well. A lot of times uh, certain foragers don't sustainably harvest them. And then when you yank them from the roots, uh, they're not gonna replenish the next year. So it's something that a lot of chefs fight for in the respect of making sure it's done the right way and that they're purchased the right way. Uh, because you know, not, not often can you get out and go forage them yourself or you may not know a space to go forage them. You have to purchase them. So you're just hoping that you know, they're sustainably sourced. Um, really wanna keep these, keep these things alive and keep them going. So I think that's really important uh, last note to kind of end on. Um, they're one of my favorite ingredients and I love ramps.